have an app on my phone that has a number of Jewish prayers on it. And one of them that catches my attention often is a blessing or a prayer of praise upon seeing a rainbow in the sky. The prayer goes like this in English. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who remembers the covenant, who is trustworthy in his covenant, and who fulfills his word. This blessing refers to the covenant that God made with humanity and all creation after that devastating flood in the time of Noah. The bow in the heavens will be a sign that there would never again be such a flood to destroy all flesh. This colorful arc in the sky that bends down from heaven to earth is meant to be a joyful sign of the promise between God and every living creature. Sirach says, Look at the rainbow and praise him who made it. It is exceedingly beautiful in its brightness. It encircles the sky with its glorious arc. The hands of the Most High have stretched it out. Praise him who made it. Pious Jewish people will say that prayer every time they see this watercolor sign of the covenant in the sky. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who remembers the covenant, who is trustworthy in his covenant, and who fulfills his word. In this year's Sunday cycle of Lenten scripture readings, year B, the first reading will focus each week on a different covenant and will end, of course, with the Lord Jesus forging a new and everlasting covenant in his own body and blood on the cross and in his resurrection. So one of the themes we can ponder and pray with this Lent is this theme of covenant, our living as a people of the new covenant through baptism in Jesus Christ. This first Sunday of Lent takes up the covenant with Noah and all creation, that God is not the destroyer, but the savior of humanity. The waters of the devastating prehistoric flood somehow point to or, or flow into the waters of the Jordan when Jesus is baptized by John, God's son, Jesus, word made flesh, though sinless himself, enters the waters along with a sea of sinners to save, not to destroy them. On Good Friday, we know that the Lord Jesus will allow himself to finally be carried away or drowned by the waters of death in order to save the lost crowd of humanity. In another part of the gospel, Jesus calls the cross his baptism and his chalice. It is his great work of saving and recreating humanity that will consume him and that he will overcome. A baptism he will wash us with, a chalice that he will give us to drink so that we may share in the new covenant he was sent to set up. Jesus can forge a new and permanent covenant between heaven and earth because he is God's son, truly God and truly human. That Jewish prayer on seeing the rainbow praises God who remembers the covenant, who is trustworthy in his covenant and who fulfills his word. Jesus remembers, Jesus is trustworthy. Jesus fulfills his word as God and man. In the gospel, we hear about Jesus' 40-day struggle in the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan and living with wild beasts. Immediately after Jesus is baptized by John, the evangelist Mark says that the Holy Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness. God's son goes under the waters with a mass of sinful people praying for forgiveness, and then he's immediately sent out into combat with Satan, the old enemy and the deceiver of humanity. Other Gospels speak a bit more about those temptations. Mark rushes to the victory and holy angels ministering to Jesus after this first battle. The temptations of the Lord Jesus in the wilderness at the very beginning of his public ministry show him as the God-man, always faithful to the covenant and who fulfills his word. He is word made flesh. As the journey to the cross goes on this Lent, we will see the Lord reveal the beautiful life of a disciple, but a life that will also often be a combat, 
a struggle for us to be faithful to God's word and God's plan for us. Jesus' first words of his ministry are in the gospel for this Sunday. He says, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. God reigns completely in his son, Jesus. He is the kingdom coming near. He is the covenant in person. When we meet Jesus, you and I are somehow always outside the covenant, not living it fully. So coming close to Jesus always means a turning around for us, a change of mind and heart, a challenge. Repent, metanoiete, change your heart, believe the good news. In a world so often focused on self and humans as individuals and our virtual realities, we may be simply tempted to turn to God for affirmation or approval of what I've decided or, or what I desire. Jesus comes inviting us into a new covenant, into God's kingdom, where he as God's son can show us the way to the fullness of life in our flesh and gently heal, strengthen, recreate heart and mind. Jesus shows us what it looks like to live in this covenant with God, and he strengthens us by his grace to do so. You have probably seen that famous image of the divine mercy. We will venerate that picture, of course, that picture of the risen Lord after Easter, but see how rays or streams flow from the risen Lord's open side. The colors are mostly red and white, but they're actually quite delicate and multicolored if you look closely. Perhaps those streams of life coming from Jesus' side can suggest for us that original rainbow in the time of Noah. Jesus' own life given for us is that new and, and stronger ark joining God and us in sweet covenant. This Lent is time fulfilled, Jesus says. It's favorable time, time to turn around and to seek to be more faithful to our baptism and our covenant in Christ. I am not yet fully in God's kingdom, but God comes in Jesus to save, not to destroy. Perhaps we Christians don't say a blessing when we see the rainbow after a storm, but we do have a pious practice of saluting the image of Christ on the cross or, or one of his stations along the way. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. <laughs>